This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. This morning, Bahamas, it is Monday, the 19th of April, 2021, and you're on the clock with Aaron Green. Boy, look here, when I hear that theme music, that make me feel like I's a millionaire, man. You make the music make me feel like I done arrive. That's what, see, that's what being, having status should be like in the Caribbean. It ain't no high drive thing, spend plenty money thing. It's a, um, I am, I can sit under my tamarind tree or my mango tree. And eat these mango and chill out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I think we need to re-examine what success means to us. Because if we formed our own idea of what success meant, then we would be a lot more comfortable and happy mm-hmm. in our lives. Mm-hmm. Right? Anyway, good morning this morning. You're on the clock with Aaron Green, and on the clock we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. Well, guys, today's show is brought to you by the Department of Inland Revenue. And they want to remind you to tune in and learn more about their Real Property Tax Forgiveness Program. Listen, don't slunk, don't sleep on it. Most importantly, Don't feel ashamed of needing help. This is the government's job, is to provide help when it's needed. And we're going to take advantage of that every time they do it. So feel no shame and don't feel afraid. If you're having issues with your real property tax, call in or email in and get the details on how you could start repairing this thing. It ain't too late. It's never too late. Also, it is still Autism Awareness Month. And I am lighting it up blue today. It's a darker shade of blue, right? Uh, I got on my little dark blue androsia, my little dark blue shirt and my dark blue socks. It's not that it's a dreary day. It's just that this is the blue I'm wearing. And it doesn't matter because we're going to celebrate autism awareness and the positive impacts that the autism community has on our lives. And don't you forget it because they do. You may not feel it directly, but trust me, They do have a positive impact. Also, it is Environment Month. Look here. What a wonderful place to be during Environment Month in the Bahamas. Perhaps one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Reviewed by the world's best astronauts and cosmonauts, right? We didn't have to lie about that. We lie about plenty of things now. Mind you. We do that. But we didn't have to lie about this one. Every day, the astronauts tell us the favorite, most favorite part of their day is when they sail over the Bahamas. And it's Environment Month, and it's important for us to recognize our obligation to preserve and protect our environment, our natural resources. Not just for our own benefit, you know. Hey, that would be sweet. That would be nice. But it ain't just for us. It's for the entire planet. Because whether you know it or not, this little place called the Bahamas, what happens here impacts the entire planet ecologically and environmentally. This is true. Well, I'm excited because I got some guests in the studio today. The BDM, that's my guess, ratified their first candidate in March, Ms. Nelda Fox. Now, she's the first candidate I was aware they ratified. And I thought, wow. What a wonderful statement. While the country is discussing the role of women in leadership, frontline politics, and public life, the BDM's first candidate is a woman. Now, you see, in the game of politics, optics is king. And I'm sure the party considered carefully which constituencies and candidates they were going to ratify first. 
So when I saw Miss Fox's name, I said to myself, this is somebody I have to talk to. Now, it took a little while, and I can tell you why it took a little while. Well, I know these guys are busy working on their campaign. Even though you don't see them in the streets on the verge of breaking COVID protocols, mm. they seem to have been running a very COVID-sensitive campaign. I know they're doing big things. And so, but let me tell you why it took me so long. Because I do politics differently. And I didn't want to invite them on the show thinking I invite them on the show to attack them with my political interrogation, mm -hmm. right? So I wanted to take some time to get my questions together. And what I've done is, and what I'm in the process of doing is creating a standard list of questions for political candidates, particularly new candidates to the political scene. So I wanted to make sure that, that I got those questions down that they weren't laced with my own personal political biases, right? And that they were sound questions that address the issues that need to be addressed. Now, there's no way we're going to get through this entire list of questions today. Um, and so this process is going to be sort of symbiotic, where myself and the guests, we, we're going to choose which topics we're going to address. But good morning, Ms. Fox. and. To your second guest, Mr. Stewart. Good morning, Mr. Cassius Stewart. Aaron Green, it is so good to be here with you, man. We ain't talking a long time. Absolutely. I haven't had a chance to harass you. This is said clearly, to harass you in a long time. You know, I see it like a bohemian. We ain't talking a long time. But it's really good to be here with you. And I'm sure we will have a good dialogue, a good discussion. It's good for, for us to be able to dissect um, all of the issues that we face in our country. And... Um, our challenge in the BDM is finding the best minds. And, um, you know, we're going to interrogate Nelly. I guess you're going <laughs> to interrogate Nelly, but she, 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 she's up for the fight. Yeah, and I got some questions here for you for you as well, right? Me too? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, absolutely. I thought I could escape. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Not at all. Um, in fact, the only way you could escape, and, you know, I recently, we have a lot of talk of corruption, right? So I can be very out in the open. If you want, get on my good side. Mm. I need a case of manga. I need a case of tamarind. <laughs> and I'll take a half a case of scarlet plum because they like gold. And the BDM our slogan is consider it done. done. Uh -huh. What? Listen, <laughs> dear aunties, old ladies, and people who like to pinch, the fruit is on the way. Consider it done. <laughs> right, because you see, this is a community effort. I don't want you all to think I is corrupt. I is beg fruit to give to the old and the young. Not, not us middle-aged people. Y'all can afford to buy fruit. Mm. Go support Rasta but not on the verges and the medians on the road because they're getting locked up, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Ms. Fox, you're the first ratified candidate for the BDM. What is your political ideology? Well, good morning, Erin, and thank you so much uh, for having us here. Um, yes, I am the first uh, candidate for, uh, that was ratified for the BDM. I think I should put this up. Oh, no, no, uh, just go you, straight to the mic. Okay, okay. Yeah, put your mouth Can as you close to the mic as possible. All yeah. right. Um, yes, I am the first candidate um, mm -hmm. ratified uh, for the BDM. And, um, and of course, as a woman, I believe um, in leadership, women role playing a pivotal part in um, leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I always was a person who was involved with community service. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in um, a party where, you know, back in the day, you had to do what your parents say. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I was one of those children. Um, and uh, I played a role in political life from the back and um, always was interested, you know. But, um, you know, growing up and seeing what's going on, I said to myself as an adult, let me get more involved. Um, in 2017, I, I trust myself into uh, the 2017 election. And so I... Now, let me ask you a quick question. <laughs> Were you working with the BDM at that time or working with another party? Well, actually, you know, the BDM had dissolved in 2012. Yeah. Um, I was always a BDM from 2005. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so when the BDM dissolved in 2012... Of course, you know, you have to still fight. And as a community builder, 
Um, I always advocate for fairness. I always advocate for women rights mm -hmm. um, when it comes to assisting uh, young people. That was me. So I trust myself into that. But in 2017, my father passed away actually in, in 2011. Mm -hmm. And um, what I wanted to do is honor my dad um, by giving my all in all and everything that he taught me um, growing up uh, to believe in the vision of the last election with the FNM. Okay. So I'm, I, I, I'm realizing that I'm supposed to know who your father is. <laughs> Tell me who your father is. Well, my father, well, he's, he, he, he's deceased he, now, yeah. um, is Calvin Spence okay. from Fort Charlotte. And so he's deeply rooted in the he's political deeply movement. Rooted. My dad had a saying, Aaron, um, when the UBP and the FNM, uh, <laughs> um, when the UBP, when the FNM split off, you know, the people yeah. in there, um, there was a dissident eight. Yeah. So dad had this saying that um, he is the dissident nine. Okay. So he's the nine. So growing yeah. up, we always knew that because him and Cecil were so close. He, he believed in the vision that Cecil had. Mm -hmm. He believed in rights for the people. And daddy fight for that all his life. And I admired that. Yeah. My dad wasn't a perfect person, but daddy believed in standing up for the people and the rights of the people. And when my father passed in 2011, I, I said to myself, Dad, I'm going to take on the mantle, and I am going to fight. I am going to fight for the rights of the people now. Saying that, in 2017, I, I went more full force yeah. behind a candidate that I believe I wouldn't call name. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I became very involved more than I did previously. And I became a, uh, a team leader for, for a certain yeah. uh, polling division in one of the areas. And with me and my team, I brought in the three polling divisions with our team okay. for, uh, for, for that area. And um, So let me just make a note. Mm -hmm. What you showed me is that you, you have both political experience on the ground, like yes. in, in, the, in the politics of this thing. Yes. How we engage people. Yes. How we share our message. Yes. But you also have the sort of grounding of a political culture. Yes. That's yes. sort of older than you, that you grew into, and that people sort of made space for you to be able to understand. It's correct. I just want to say this here. I think these are things that are important for new candidates mm -hmm. to think about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What am I bringing to the table? Yes. And how did I get here? That's right. Right? Because you, you need to be rooted in an ideology. And you've got to oh. believe what you do. Yeah. Um, I believed in the message of the FNM in 2017, the People's Time. I think a lot of us did. Yeah. I believe that was young leaders coming up, a different type of leader, um, new you had a new leader for, for the average, uh, Dr. Minnis. Yeah. Mm. And then they, of course, brought in new, new candidates yeah. that had new ideas. Mm -hmm. And some of the ideas that they had, I believed in. The message of the people's time was like, yes, this is the time now and that here. the people... I, in fact, I want to ask you all, what is your pol political slogan? Because we, the people's time is, was brilliant, mm -hmm. right? That's a brilliant... You know what else is brilliant? Mm -hmm. Like, it's better in the Bahamas. Like, mm -hmm. So not even just the political slogans, even mm -hmm. our tourism slogans. They so brilliant. Well, one of, uh, you know, we all call it slogans. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I, I do not get involved with anything unless I believe in it. Yeah. And um, like I said, I was a PDM for, from 2005, and I met Mr. Stewart. I'm going to tell you the slogan, but I want to give you this story. Um, my husband and I had a... Similar radio talk show in Cool 96 at that time. Okay. Miss um, um, uh, Andre Gottlieb mm -hmm. uh, owned Cool 96, and we had a, a talk show called the Keep It Real Talk Show. Okay. Um, how that came about is because if you remember, we had a bad hurricane in Freeport um, during the 2005 to mm -hmm. seven, which was Hurricane uh, Jean and Francis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that talk show, um, we believe that. Uh, we were, were engaging people in trying to help persons to go through this, this season of 
disaster. So, disaster. And, and because if you know yeah. Freeport, Freeport was considered the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that hurricane really brought everyone down to their knees, including us. So we uh, felt that, that because we are, are Christians, and I, be, and I say in Christians, a disciple of Christ. I, I believe I'm a disciple of Christ because everybody says he's Christians. Yeah. Then that's that's a different story. But so we uh, decided to, um, you know, help persons through communicating on the radio. Persons who have problems, persons who need our um, counseling, and during that time we had persons calling in for food and clothes and you know, roof over the head, and, you know, me and my husband said to ourselves, let's see what we can do. Well, we, we got together, and we uh, called up a couple of the businesses around there, and, and they did uh, sponsor us yes. with food, clothing, uh, getting out from Weston to... Transportation and things like that. Um, we, we were down on food, and I heard about this, this party, this, this young little party coming up um, in Nassau, yeah. um, where these people were feeding people. So I said to my husband, uh, we got to get help. Uh, we want to continue doing this, so we need the help. But lo and behold, we were walking through uh, Port Bukai, and I, I look around, I heard a person say, oh, that is Cassie Stewart from the BDM. That's the man from the BDM. Turn around, I look, I saw him, but I didn't say anything. I went home, and I told uh, my husband, Joe, I said, we got to contact this man, this is the man. We called him. He didn't know us. Mm -hmm. I asked him, I said, could you just send us a box? I told him what we were doing. I said, I heard what you're doing. I said, and, and we're just asking. We're just reaching out. I believe in community service. I believe in the community working together. And um, he said to me, he said, what do you need? And I said, well, Mr. Stewart, I, we just need a, a box of rice and some you know, tuna. Yeah. Two weeks later, Mr. Stewart in the BDM called me and said, we are on our way. Brought down a trailer of food to feed the people of Freeport in the bazaar. This is a man that I did not know. Mm -hmm. I look at my husband and I said to him, now this is a leader I would like to follow. Because he has the heart for the people. You don't have to know him. He don't have to know you. You just say, I need help. So... Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I sit in there as I await my <laughs> trailer <laughs> load of covering. And she can get me in trouble on the show tonight. <laughs> what? She can get me in trouble on the show tonight. So, it leads me to, I would be sort of running out of time. Mm. I already got a text here for you. Okay. And so I'm going to ask both of you this question. That's honorable, right? That The, the whole thing is honorable. The disregard for whether you're a party member, if you're going to support That's me right. or not, That's be right. here, we're going to, all of that is admirable, but... How do you feel about this juxtaposition or this question, right? Is it time for us to move away from charity and asking and thanking people for charitable donations and move towards a real economic reform and strategy that will mean that less people have to rely on charity and more people have equal access to, eco to the economy? Well, that is that is <laughs> that is something that we as a as a party been preaching for the last twenty one mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. because every child that is born have to suck from a mother's breasts. You become dependent, mm -hmm. and everything in life goes through th three stages: from dependent, then you're independent, and then you're interdependent. Us as a country, we are hovering, we're stuck on dependency. Mm -hmm. We want to suck from the breasts of the politicians. Mm -hmm. We don't think it's need for us to be weaned off the breasts and become independent, independent. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You see, one of the things that we learned is that, you know, we all want manna from heaven, mm -hmm. you know, because it's easy. You don't have to work. The manna falls from heaven. You get up this morning, the bread on the floor, you know, we just go and pick the bread up and be good. And then when we tired of the bread, we complain to God, we want the fish, and he gave you the fish. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we miss is that that same scripture that said, when they crossed the Jordan, the manna stopped. Mm -hmm. In other words, it is time for you to grow your own corn, right, right. plow your own fields, plant your own peas, grow your own pigeon, your, your chicken, your pig, and so on. And so it, 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 it leads me to this point that after 47 years of independence, it is time for us to become an 
independent Independence. nation, a self-sustaining nation where we can feed ourselves That's across right. the board agriculturally. And, then, and, and we could decide who we want to be interdependent Dependent. with. That's that right. interdependence right. comes when we have enough grain that we grow, enough rice that we grow, enough corn that we grow that we could say to Jamaica yes. and Haiti mm -hmm. and so on. So we are now interdependent. We are giving to others. Mm -hmm. But we are still hovering between mm -hmm. the dependent stage. And so it is time for us now to get off the breast. Mm -hmm. It is time for get off the political breast, looking for the politician for a job, mm -hmm. looking for somebody to do something for us. But we have to build this nation. Our nation can only be built with us, on our, with our hands. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Listen. And so if we take, if we take the theory that something's going to fall from heaven, even God himself stopped that. Mm -hmm. Because it is not, it is not natural for human beings ah. to wait for somebody. We, listen, one of the things that, one of the commands that we've gotten is that go and work the ground, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the Commonwealth of the Bahamas from Bimini to Inagua, there's a lot of unworked ground. There's so much things that we could do with our islands through building um, 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 okay. vertical farming. I, 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 that's right there. That's a whole other question I had, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. How do we drive development, particularly in family islands, right? How do you drive development but balance that with environmental stewardship, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and prioritizing the need and the obligation to protect and preserve See, the environment. When it comes when it comes to the environment, we must understand that there is something called uh, um, sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And sustainable development is development which meets the needs of the present, but it doesn't compromise future, future. generations of meeting their own needs. Mm -hmm. In other words, we won't put a future generations at risk. When it comes to land, we are we were not we were not um, balanced in terms of uh, uh, sustainable development. What in the sixties and seventies they took all the choice land. Mm -hmm. And when I mean took, so, took all the choice land, because I have, I have a copy of the, the, uh, the, uh, a list of all of the crown land that was given away from 1960 to now. And when you see what they did, they put the future generations at a disadvantage because they took all the land for free. For free. And now a generation is rising up of professionals. We can't get access to the land because they've now priced it out of the market. If you think it's the professionals have a problem, you need to check out poor people no, so, that don't so, have no degree. But you see, that's what I'm trying yeah, to get. Yeah, yeah. So if it's the problem at this level, imagine what everybody, everybody else, else is going that's through. Right. Yeah. And so when we look at building a country, we got to think about future generations Generation. of Bahamians. And particularly <clears throat> with this housing crisis. Now, I say it's a housing crisis. What do you say? Are we in the midst of a housing crisis? Uh, I mean, for, for me, I mean, for me, I think what we what we're in the beyond a housing crisis, we are in a national crisis, <clears throat> because the country has a nine point eight billion dollar debt, right? The central bank governor says that ninety percent of everybody in the Bahamas has what less than ninety days worth of money in case of emergency. That was before COVID. Oh yeah. So we've been here two years now, right? Mm -hmm. So you have but ninety percent of the people got but less than three hundred thousand dollars in their bank account. So how do you have our look at getting a house when you ain't got no money in the first place. Oh, yeah. And then the banks put restrictions because banks are private operations that are looking to make a profit. They're not here to deal with any social issues. Um, however, when you look at how do you, when, when you go to the banks, the banks have their policies which are so stringent, it is almost difficult for you to get access to the banks. Then you had many people lost their jobs in this crisis. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so they ain't got no money mm -hmm. to eat. This point right here. How we can is, get a house. Is, is, is almost difficult to even access the bank, right? So mm -hmm. I asked this question, what's the purpose of a bank if everybody can't access, can't access it? it? B, right? And so and the second one is 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 a little is a little more difficult, right? Like I look at the, the there's a story in the Tribune today saying mortgage banks looking for the creme de la creme. And it made me think, what is more important in this relationship here? Mm -hmm. Right? Is it the, that people need housing, whether it's a home or it's a rental property, or is it that banks need to make a profit? How, how do we find that well, balance, and where does banking reform sit on your agenda of things? Oh, you are so tempting mm -hmm. today. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have a lot of time. I know, so, let, so, me, so let, me try, let me try to compress yeah. it. Let me try to compress it. I had somebody that very close to me applied for, they wanted to get a condominium, right? And they are an attorney. Yeah. in the Bahamas. And um, they told me that they said to the bank, listen, I make $150,000 a year. Here's what the bank told them. Under their new COVID rules, right, they could only consider 50% of his salary. 
which is 75,000, mm -hmm. right? And of that 75,000, they can only consider 40%. 40. Mm -hmm. Now, he's an attorney. He can't qualify. So listen, is that why politicians refuse to take a pay cut in the time of COVID? Because if they did, some of them would come close to bankruptcy, which, which would then jeopardize the ability to save in the house. I don't know course. why they do it, but all I do know is... No, because that's the, a banking the, the, president. The pol that yeah. policy is crazy policy. That's a crazy that's policy. A crazy policy. And we need to reform our banks. You know, we need to open it up. For me, I want to open it up. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should be stuck and married to just the Canadian banks. No. There are other banks around the world who can do a good job. But for, for me, I believe that there are Bahamians who can run their own banks. Right. There are Bahamians who have money. I said open it up, allow Bahamians to now get into the banking sector so that they could be in the commercial lending business. There are people now who are not who are for, for prohibited from getting their um, um, lending license. How can you have the second largest industry in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas that is not owned or being played with by Bahamians? Bahamians got to own banks. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way for us to realize the dream, the success of the new Bahamas. The modern Bahamas has to be owned, built, and developed by Bahamians. If, if, if it's not, we are wasting our time. Now, it's time for business for Bahamians. Now, listen, I'm an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist advocate. And I imagine I sit on the other side of the economic table as you. But I agree with you there, mm -hmm. right? I, it, it can't work. I wouldn't say, I understand the need to focus on an economic platform when you run in the country, without a doubt. That got to be one of your major foci, foci mm -hmm. if not the biggest one, right? Mm -hmm. But I think you got to find balance with these other areas. But I agree with you. If Bahamians aren't participating in the economy, it's a problem. Aaron, it's a problem. We, Might as well yes, shut it down. We are, right? the, we are the consumers of our economy, but we are not the drivers of our economy. Mm -hmm. When you look at the hotels, the drivers, the number one industry, it is not owned by Bahamians. We have some, uh, let me get it. some Bahamians own some little small hotels. Let me get that right, right? Yeah. But the big ones are yes. not owned by Bahamians. Yes. I want but Bahamians. It's, 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 it's bigger than that. The tourism product itself is oh, not I, owned by Bahamians because it's produced right. by Madison. a foreign imagination. I, listen, listen. <laughs> the casinos, right? Yeah. I want the Bahamians to so own the, the casinos. casinos. That's right. I want the Bahamians to own the hotels. Mm -hmm. I want the Bahamians to own the banks. How can we build a country around the people but not for the people? people. We've got to build the Bahamas it's for Bahamians. It's easy if you're building a plantation. You understand? Know this. But you see the mindset. Yeah. What we need is the modern Bahamas. See, this is why I'm speaking to the architects of the modern mm -hmm. Bahamas. If you're listening to me, we need you on our no, team. That's I, right. I, now, that's let right. me rephrase this, because right? some of y'all don't think he's speaking to you. Some of y'all right now don't think he's speaking to you, but he's speaking to you. That's exactly. Right. That's right. You are the architects of the modern Bahamas. The new reality that we want, the PLP and the FNM can't take can't us there. Take okay, now, before I get accused of being, bringing y'all on my show and just agreeing with y'all about everything, call a hold the line. Uh, we're going to get to you in a second, or call back. Uh, we're we're going to take a break soon, and then after the break, we're going to let callers in. I got some text here. And now this one question I wanted to ask you. This text say, DNA, NCP, BDM never win a seat. Never. Uh, first of all, sir, people used to say the FNM was never That's win a right. seat. That's right. That's right. Either. In fact, they, people believed that so much. I had a neighbor that when the FNM won the first time, my neighbor let off five shots with the shotgun, one for every term the PLP was in power. Mm. So people really never believed the FNM would win. So don't put that on the, on the BDM or any third party. But that leads me to my question, and that is this. When is the BDM-DNA coalition going to take place? I ain't asking if. Hey, <laughs> I'm asking <laughs> when. <laughs> but let me tell you all why I ask it. We got all these third parties, and we got all this talk about coalitions mm. and coming together for the sake of the people and for the sake of getting these other guys out. Mm -hmm. I don't do things for the sake of them things. Mm -hmm. I want to know that when I'm making a decision, I'm making a sound and yeah, informed yeah. decision. Of course. And I look, at the, I look at all of the parties who could form coalitions. And if there's anything... Why wouldn't it be the BDM and the DNA? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm considering, I was looking through our archives yesterday, and um, Arente Komalafi was a member of the BDM. Mm -hmm. As well, right? And, and, and then Omar Smith is a member uh, of the BDM. That's right. In, fact, in fact, Lincoln Bain was a member of the BDM as well. Oh, my. So really? all of, the, all of all them of came them. out of the belly of the BDM. Mm -hmm. So um, it is time for us to consider how we're going to um, form the next government and shape how it's going to look. Um, those talks have been started, and um, there is some dialogue going on. Um, there's a lot of mountains to climb and valleys to go through, but we'll see how it comes out at the end. 
Um, we, we believe that um, there are a considerable amount of people in the DNA that can bring significant value to the advancement of this nation. And um, so um, I, am, I, am, I am prayerful. I am prayerful, Aaron, that you know, we could perhaps come to some kind of arrangement, agreement, or whatever. But we're open for talks. And we, mm -hmm. we have been, um, at some point, whispering. And you know, they've been whispering back. Mm -hmm. And see, people think it's just, because I, I like to crack joke, I just crack joke, right? Mm -hmm. I'm being dead serious. Because what we're looking at is, although we got a party like the Bahamas Christ, uh, Constitution Party, that's been in the game for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. I think that the BDM and the DNA bring something different to the table. Both bring a degree of experience in politics on the ground. That's right. And both bring a degree of experience in governance, mm -hmm. if not in the House of Assembly through their various business pursuits and in the maintaining and running of a political party, mm -hmm. right? Like there's a degree of governance that you have to be able to manifest, right? Yes, yes. In that. And so I think that if we seriously consider in coalitions, we need to consider what it is that these people bring to the table and the potential of them working together mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And in yes. a sustainable no, it, it way. Only, it, only, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense for, for us to have the dialogue. And so we'll see how it goes. We, we, we're prayerful about it and and right. see, where, see where it ends up. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this question um, about St. Anne's being the barometer for governance right after I get to these texts. Okay. Right? <laughs> so I got a text here that says, uh, well, thank you, text to Miss Green, morning too straight. He mean the FNM. <laughs> That's what he mean. I don't know. Good morning, sir. Ask, oh, they were just saying to speak up. They're enjoying what you have to say, but they didn't catch it clearly. So we're going to reiterate some of those projects you're working in mm -hmm. in your constituency before the show goes on. Of course. Hey, Aaron, you really like tamarind? Nah, joke is that I promised myself I don't pick tamarind and sea grape for men, women only, because it's harder to pick than a mango or a dilly. That, I mean, that's discrimination. Yes, Lord. Your male cousins, your brethren, <laughs> them, they need fruit. Look at how y'all just discriminate. I see why y'all man them is be upset at us, woman. Imagine somebody saying they ain't picking no fruit for you because you was man. And I don't think they mean you could pick it for yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. But listen, let me tell you why you should pick tamarind and sea grape. Tamarind is good for the liver. And so if you're drinking a lot of bush tea, mm -hmm. if you're taking meds, you talk to your doctor first, right? If you have any liver condition, talk to your doctor about using the tamarind fruit regularly in your diet as a liver conditioning tool. These things make plenty of money, you know. In fact, when I open my bank, you're going to need to open an account. You're going to need at least 50,000 sea grape <laughs> to get in my bank. Another text, Lord of Mercy, what is your political ideology? Texter, I got a texter here who is saying he needs a little bit more information about your political ideology. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, Texter, I got it, you know. I think she's saying, look, I am rooted in a politic of service. Service, is it? Service. L listen, I believe that it has been too long that we as a people, every five years we vote for color. We need good and true and real governance. Absolutely. I believe of empowerment. I believe that we as a people need to now encourage each other. One of the things I want to bring to, to the Fort Charlotte community is a sense of empowerment. We talked just now about um, depending on government. I don't believe in that. I believe that government is set up to add on to us. We as a people have to now look at ourselves and say, listen, for 40 plus years, government has used us because they know that if they keep us over the hill, especially for the over the hill community, if they keep us yeah, in our enemy. mindset mm -hmm. of thinking that we are over the hill, they win. Mm -hmm. They win every five years to see yeah. two parties. I believe this, though, that this is the season that our mindset has been changed a lot, the COVID didn't just come for COVID's sake. COVID came for us to sit down and to see what's best for us. This is the first time for everyone. Mm -hmm. For me personally, COVID got me to a point where I had to look and say, 
If I have to depend on going on the lines for food, no jobs, my neighbor getting put out, then I have to do something. Because if something like this happens again, mm -hmm. I want to be that person to make that change. And when I was asked to run, I said to myself, Father, if you're going to put me now into frontline politics, Mind you now, like I said before, I always community builder. Mm -hmm. If you're going to now trust me into being a nation builder, help me to do the things that the people need. Absolutely. Look here. I, go ahead. I, go I ahead. get some callers on the line. <laughs> it's, it's getting a little hot in here. And I got to ask you this question about St. Anne's. That's the hottest question. Caller, you're on the clock. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One, One second, caller. One second. Uh, One yeah. second. There we go. Hello. Hi. Hello? Right there. We're here. I was just trying to get your volume up. How are you? Okay. How are you doing? Good, thank you. What I want to ask the DNA is, um, I've seen where... Um, now, no, no, and pause. The BDF. Listen, ma'am, you can cause me getting trouble. We're okay. talking to Nelda Fox and Cassius George from the BDM. Oh, for the BDM. Okay, I thought it was the DNA. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's because you were inspired I by hope, what they I were saying. They, I hope like they're saying they come together. Yeah. And they join us together. That's the only way they can defeat this government. There you go. Mm -hmm. They have to do it. They have to come together and stop this peace here and peace there, mm -hmm. you know? But what I want to bring, I thought it was them. Have you seen the screen where they have all those counts of died in Exuma on the beach? What? No, I'm going gonna, gonna to look into that. Yes, they have it now on, someone sent it on, on my daughter's cell. That okay. You can see thousands of counts. Pile up on the beach in Exuma. Please look into that for me because mm -hmm. it concerns me. Something is killing them out, and they're all on the beaches in Exuma. But mm -hmm. I would like to encourage these parties to stop being PC and PC there mm -hmm. and come together. Sit down with each other. That is the only way they can defeat this government because wherever they have a meeting, the police are stopping them. Mm -hmm. No one can hear their message. That's right. So... Then you together and you stand together, you will win. Yes, ma'am. But then you are apart, divided. You cannot win. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let them come together, sit down, put all their, play, their, their platform together, and decide what is best for the Bahamas. Nice. The main thing, what is best for the Bahamas. Thank they you must very do much. That. Yes, yes ma'am. I would like to get, if they can, I wouldn't mind if they can speak, whoever party I'm talking to is so on, I can get their phone number. Oh, All right, sure, I'll make sure. them share their contact information. I'll make them share the contact information. Absolutely, and put that on your prayer list, ma'am. Yes, okay, please. I will. I Thank will. you. And we are praying for you because right now, this government has to go. Yes, Amen. yes. And I think, and, and thank you for that sentiment. I think more importantly, people are praying that they get to participate more. They, ain't, they don't want to beat up nobody, you know. People just want more from their government and they want to be able to do more. In yes. their government. Erin, uh, can, I, can I say something? Mm -hmm. She talked about the conks dying on the beach, you know, and that is, that is disturbing, and uh -huh. we must look at that. Yes. But I don't want us to forget that there are a lot of us are dying from cancer that is killing us. There's That's right. so much Bahamians that are dying from cancer, whether it's breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer. That is, it is, no, nobody's talking about it. The number one killer of Bahamians is hypertension and diabetes. And so when you, when you, if, you, if you take a random survey, perhaps 70% of the people with Rome would have high hypertension. If you ask them how many people you know have died from cancer, and I've, did this, done, I've done this several times, most of the people raise their hand. So while the conks are dying on the beach, the Bahamians are dying on the land. Mm -hmm. yes. And we got to find out what is killing us. Right. Is it the food we're eating? Is it, is it intentional that someone, some, something is killing us? Because I find it quite strange that my grandfather lived to see 94. His aunt lived to see 97. Mm -hmm. But we are dying at 50 and 60 and in an early age. And so something is really eating away at the Bahamian um, lifestyle. And so what we want to do in the BDM is to make sure that we can pro produce the healthiest, healthiest country in the region. That's we right. have a policy of number one. And we want the Bahamas to be considered the number one, the healthiest country in the Caribbean region. Yes. How do we do that? 
Are you telling you how you do it? And, you? and so I know that same time that, that's, that's just gonna say that. You see? <laughs> but we got to grow our own yes, food. See, yeah. we got to turn these islands into farms. farms. Man, look here, you, you, got, you only saying things I agree with. I try to find that's something all I, we disagree that's with. That's all I got to say, Eric. <laughs> but true, true. Because, true. because we have now, I've been talks with some people who do vertical farming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do we put a probably 30,000 acres of vertical farming where we can produce tomatoes and cabbages Cabbage and lettuce and so on. And we can be able to sustain the entire um, Commonwealth of the Bahamas when it comes to food products. And the tourism industry, if we could ever and the get back to and the 7 tourism, million and the 10 million we know we could bring in per year. That's the right. most important thing is we need to produce organic yeah, like food. Now, okay. This junk that so we eat is killing us. I, yes. I agree. Pause. See, I got a call and then I got these texts here, right? And I want to say this thing. See, you can't just produce organic food. You have to create an infrastructure because you have to continue. You have to test the land regularly and mm -hmm. frequently. Mm -hmm. You got to test the water. You got to certify all your all your ad additives, right? And then you got to test the produce to mm -hmm. certify it organic. And what I'm speaking to is not just agriculture, but to every single industry we say we can create with natural resources. Do we understand? It's not a, just a matter of pulling the sand out of the ground or pulling the oil out of the of ocean. We can get to that. We can it's get to it's that. a matter of creating an in, 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 in this. Hold on, listen. But, but, hold on, hold on. I, I only making a point because no, we, no, no. we can't you, even answer this. It's I a, can answer that. No, I don't. I don't. We ain't gonna answer it. We don't have enough time. I got somebody here with one. It's so question. much that the BDM has to say. And then I wanted to say to y'all, this C Saint Anne's is a barometer for governance. Mm -hmm. I could tell what your capacity is to lead or govern depending on the campaign that you run in St. Anne's. Why? Well, because we feel this is traditionally an FNM seat. Mm -hmm. The amount of effort you put into a seat that you probably won't win is the amount of effort that you will put into governance knowing that the majority of people may never be satisfied with what you do or may not take the time to understand why you're doing what you do. Mm -hmm. So... St. Anne's is a barometer for governance. Are you running a candidate in St. Anne's? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, when are you going to find out? You can find out, you can find out all <laughs> the time. Where's their constituency office? Listen, we are putting together our team of mm. leaders, and I don't call them candidates, our no. team of leaders. Okay. Because the way, the, the way we see our country moving forward, we need leaders to take our country forward. Mm -hmm. Our policy of number one in everything requires that we put forward the best minds. All right. So you go in for every seat every this round? Seat. For 2022, you yes. go in for every seat? Yes. Yes. And that is our challenge. Our challenge is to find the best, best. minds to put in That's all right. 39 well, look constituencies. Y'all you better find a good mind to put in St. Anne's because see, here's what the problem is with St. Anne's as well. No matter what you feel politically about St. Anne's, right? And I can tell you all this. I didn't have a problem telling... The FNMs who came to my community last year to my house for the last election, I don't have a problem with voting for Brent for mm -hmm. MP mm -hmm. because traditionally this representation in my community has been great, right? Mm -hmm. I do have concerns about what it means for Brent Simonet to be in governance and at the highest level of governance. And so I have to consider the balance, balance of these it. things, yes. mm -hmm. right? So people go into St. Anne's not realizing it's not just about the politics and the faces. It's about the work that you are willing to do on the ground in that constituency that determines how people feel about you. Yes. Now, they may not vote for you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they can like you. Yeah. They can support yeah. you. They can talk good about you. No, but what I what I think is that I think we have these prejudices of these communities over the past. Oh, they only F and M. Oh, they only this, and that has changed. I think because this COVID nineteen has allowed everybody to stop, stop. and pause, mm -hmm. and they had a good reflection on everything. Not only just the governance, the political process, the world, the way they see their own life, their diet. So everybody reflected on a and, whole lot of things. And if, is it making sense? I, right, exactly. And that's the question I think everybody's asking themselves: Is it making sense? Because do I continue to eat the food that is killing me? Okay. No. So after COVID, you see everybody on the street exercising and so on, which was, ref was refreshing. But also politically, you know, these political parties are, are giving us um, 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 diabetes. Not literal diabetes, I'm talking figuratively. In other words, they are not doing what they need to do to create no, no, us no. healthy. I mean, and, 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 and so, te technically I would go as far as to say the other thing, right? Because if you're having a campaign event, why, why, why are you getting out soda? 
Well, well that, I mean, that's, that's and, and, and you got so much resources and the capacity yeah. to, yes. to, to shift the culture, yeah. knowing that people are going to galvanize around yeah. your events. That's how you do it. Yeah. But, but I, I wasn't well, literally talking. I, wasn't I, know, literally, I know. I was figuring that's talking. Me. So for the, for the people out there who, who listen to me, that I wasn't literal. I was. No, I was trying I to didn't I knock I on the PLP in I was four days. I was so. trying to stress a point. The point I'm trying to trying to stress is that people had an opportunity to reflect, mm-hmm. and in their reflection, they said, "We are tired. Look at where we are." The national insurance of um, 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 $1.9 billion um, um, pension plan is already depleted. Mm-hmm. There's no money in the, and there's no money in the, in, 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 in the government right now. The, um, now national, insurance now is, national insurance is stretched to the, to the limit. I, we're running out of time here, but you're right. People have had time to reflect. Where can I find your economic plan? And so we have because a, f- a lot of people yes. are, are tired of these other them. Mm-hmm. But a person like me, yes. I, I, I know where I jump in before I jump. Well, you know we got a 40-year plan. Yeah. We have a 40-year plan. Tell the people where they could find it. MyBDM.org. And contact numbers. No. My number for Fort Charlotte, uh, or if anyone wants to reach out, is 828-4902. 828-4902. That's Nelda Fox. All right. Thank you. Now, I got a caller on the, on the line. They've been there for a minute. Caller, you're on the clock. Caller, you're on the clock. You still there? Oh, I'm sorry. I lost you, call up. But I got these texts here. I, I got to read the text. The people is run hot on you. So the first text says, I agree, Aaron, but the rich want a charity society where their money is God. Leadership should be based on how well you solve problems and not on your status. Well, you know, Texter, we have developed over the last few decades a culture of solving problems with money. Mm-hmm. I think uh, what would... Mr. Stewart was speaking to his people uh, have taken time to re-examine. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one of the things I, when, I, when I walk around for Charlotte, I ask persons, um, I want to be a candidate that we work together. Let me know what you need. Let me know how we can do this together, not just a candidate I coming. Cannot. Yes. We have to work with the people of the community that we serve, not just during the election, but even after. You know what most of them told me? We just want you to still be here with us. We just want you to still work with us. Persons who know Nelda Fox know me as a ground person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I continuously love working with People on the ground, yes, when it comes time for me to represent you in the House of Parliament, people who still know me know this mouth will fight for you. Mm -hmm. But I also will work with you. And so the people now are asking for the member of parliament or the candidates, come to me, find out what I need. Send to me in the process. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have, uh, we're developing uh, something called the Collaboration Board in Fort Challenge. So okay. my persons who are listening to me, come to me, come to the head office, call me, 828-4902. Join me on this Collaboration Board. What we want to do is have every person that wants to be a part of the building of the community so we can, you. yes, yeah. and so we can work together to build the community together. Absolutely. And, and we also have a halfway house that we are yes, going to. Yes, I'm about to tell you. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's so it's much amazing. Fun. Yes. We are, we are going in, in Fort Charlotte yes. for persons who are. So, so like a temporary housing, housing initiative. Yes. yes. So yeah. what, I, what has happened, I'm going to make this quick. quick. Um, we had a resident who heard uh, what we want to do in Fort Charlotte. I, I'm a person who's a quick starter. Yeah. I don't donated, wait around. They donated a house. They donated their to the house party. to the party. The house is, of course, need renovation so I'm asking for everyone who's out there to come on board mm-hmm. uh, the surrounding so, community so to help us build it so here's what I say in right you all mm-hmm. support this for Charlotte initiative and then when you support them go support some other people do the same that's thing. right see I said chick Johnny we teeth your idea and share it for the good <laughs> amen what a wonderful initiative guys I'm so sorry we are running out of time I got to read these last two texts go right ahead morning lady green good morning and congrats to the BDM and the ratified candidate along with Brother Cassius Stewart, who should have been Prime Minister many years ago. Mm-hmm. I wish them all the best. Side note. Thank you. Uh, people are always talking about how astronauts are magnetically and magically drawn to the most beautiful view from space being the radiant, vibrant glow of the Bahama Islands. So why then are they only making movies showing visitors from outer space first landing on Earth, visiting America and never the Bahamas? Let me tell you why. Because aliens have good sense. They ain't gonna park their space vehicle <laughs> in the most beautiful part of the planet. Unlike Bahamians that will park their car right in the beach and push out the fumes 
on the beach goers. Mm. The aliens have sense. Mm-hmm. We have sense mm. too, just not as much as them. That's why we ain't space traveling yet, people. Mm-hmm. Just trust them. Thank you very much for that joke. Texter, the Bahamas is the most beautiful place in the world. Hi, the Americans must be the smartest. They are all, all they are doing is printing money. Those wonderful notes that read, in God we trust. Mm. Well, I don't know if, the, if, if that's the right economic plan for us, Texter. And on mm-hmm. another opportunity, I will ask Mr. Stewart and Ms. Fox what they think about that and, and these economic strategies that mirror American strategies. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, guys, I didn't even get to the questions, right? We well, finish? <laughs> Boy, I got one minute left. What? Prepare Uh, yourself for this. And for the other candidates, prepare yourself for this. Here are the questions. How do you discipline or cause Bahamians to discipline themselves? You see, Finland had it easy. Finland was only galvanizing people around a political and social and personal construct that had already been established, Mm. ending apartheid against Africans across Mm. the world. All Finland had to do was lead these people. Listen, Aaron, it's been written already for us. That's right, preamble. Our preamble of the That's Constitution. Right. Our mm-hmm. national success. Now, listen, you... Hold on, listen. Oh, yeah, oh, let me, let me you finish. You're talking pretty words, but I had to drive here this morning, and these people need help uh, learning how you, to moderate their behavior. Listen, our national success must be guaranteed through a national commitment That's right. to self-discipline. Mm-hmm. Discipline must be a part of our culture, culture across the board. Yes. In order for us to realize the success that the Bahamas will gain, mm-hmm. it has to be built on the foundation of discipline Yes. across the board. You don't show trash on the street. We don't disrespect our parents. As a part of our culture in the Bahamas, we are a disciplined people, and that's what we want. Right now, the reason why you see all this carnage on the street is because we are undisciplined. Mm-hmm. The reason why you see all this corruption is because we are undisciplined. Discipline must come from the top. The leaders must show discipline. Mm -hmm. And how do you expect the people at the bottom to be disciplined if the leaders are undisciplined? Across the board, we must be a disciplined Disciplined. society. Remember, our national success will be guaranteed through a national commitment to Mm self-discipline. And without that discipline, we ain't nothing. That is one of the pillars of our foundation of our country. Thank you. Discipline. (laughs) Thank you. Look here, and I have to be disciplined, and I got to end the show. Even though my prior um, show host took a couple of my seconds... Don't say nothing. Here are some of the other questions that you guys will face in the future and some of y'all other candidates will face. It'll take 10 years before we could have another referendum, but we got some issues we need to fix in the short term. So how are you going to fix campaign finance reform? Fixed election dates. Don't say nothing. Turn <laughs> list. Constitution equality between men and women, right? What are we going to do about natural resources? We have to talk about the archipelagic exterior and its development, protecting the vulnerable, freedom mm. of information, to republic or not to republic? And most importantly, how will you balance your obligation and duty to follow the rule of law, your duty to country and citizens, to constituents, to PM and cabinet and party? And Ms. Fox, that's for you too, because yes, when this man become PM, of we course. all have to learn how to use the law no, that well, exists right. to ensure that he too follows the rule of law. You discipline, know what? Discipline, discipline, what, discipline, what, discipline. What, I gotta go. I ain't got no more oh, time. Man. Discipline. You gotta have us back. That's right. But give us your contact information yes. one last time. So go to www.mybdm.org. That's our website. Go on our Facebook page uh, for Fort Charlotte. It's the face, Facebook Fort Charlotte. Also go on to uh, Bahamas Democratic Movement on YouTube. See our plans. Uh, search us up. Please do call. 828 like and subscribe. Join us. Join, join us, us today. Join us, join us, join us. Help us secure the future of the next, of generation. The next generation. And like they said, donate fruit to Aaron Green. <laughs> Bahamas, you have a great day. You've been tuned into 96.9 FM, and that means Levan Miller and Unleashed is up next. Have a great day, Bahamas. Amen. Thank you.